Hey guys, welcome to the Killian Family Homestead. Got quite a mess going on here and you can see that the hives have shrunk. Well, this year I'm not going to call it a success by any means. Uh, not from a lack of effort. My goodness, I did a lot of studying and a lot of effort to to work on these bees. But the Varroa mite, the Varroa destructor, it just is absolutely horrible. Um, you can't really treat for Varroa too well when the, when the brood nest is expanding, so I didn't treat it in the summer. And now it's nearing fall, and I've now put the Apivar into it. Let me show you the package. Here's the treatment that I chose to do this fall, um, Apivar. Uh, you just, what you do is you go ahead and you put these strips, no more than two per brood box. Let's, let's say this is a brood box here. As you can see, there's quite a bit of robbing that's going on which I don't want because I'm freezing these frames and they might be catching some mites, so that's not good. But uh, one thing you do is you make sure you treat all your hives, okay? You, don't, you take this strip right here, it has this little flap right there, and you just slide it on the outside edges of the brood nest, okay? It's no more than two per brood box. Then you place it down and you keep it there in there for 42 days and then you remove them. Um, in case of movement inside the beehive, far from the strips, reposition the strips into the bee cluster and leave the strips in place for 14 more days. Um, strips must be removed after a maximum of 56 days. So I've harvested some honey and uh, I'm going to freeze those bad frames. I'm going to let other frames that were not uh, capped off or partially drawn out to be robbed out. Then I'm going to freeze the bad frames and take all this stuff in for storage over the winter. Let these hives calm down a little bit. We've also, as you can see here, I don't know what happened to queen number four, but she just vanished completely. From the last check I had, which was seven days ago till now, she must have died somehow and they kicked booed her out of the hive. And uh, then the bees just were not vigorous enough. And it wasn't worth saving. I didn't know if they gave up because of a disease or just because of their numbers or the late swarm effect. Um, but I decided to just cull that out and combine that into a really strong hive. So hive number two has been awesome. Hive number one has struggled at the late season. We did really well in the buildup, but it's struggling now. Hive number three right here, doing so-so. Um, I've taken it down to one box for overwintering. Every single one of these hives has the appropriate amount of Apivar strips in it to hopefully wipe out the mite so that next year will be a fantastic year. Let me show you the frames of honey that I have. When you're harvesting honey, you will inevitably spill honey everywhere, okay? Now, you don't have to be as careless as I am, but the great thing about honeybees is that they're incredibly, what's the word, tidy. Look at them. Have you ever seen a bee's tongue? On the outside edges of frames that you're going to be putting in the freezer or um, you're going to be treating of some sort, you, you can scrape off the honey on the outside edges maybe, and then melt down the wax or put it in the freezer or something like that. Those outside edges, the way to extract the honey is through these strainers, the kind of the mesh micro, micro mesh there that slowly seeps the honey into whatever container you want. And that's what I'm doing here. I just got it propped up and it's going to slowly over time drip into it and then we'll be able to put it into a usable bottle for our family. Let me show you a perfect frame. I'm really proud of this one. I know to a lot of beekeepers this is, this is common but look at that. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. The other side was perfect too before a little bit of robbing took place. That's what that right there is. When robbing is incentivized or created, the bees come in and they typically start in the edges like this, and they're just like a ferocious animal will rip off all the cappings and start guzzling down the honey as fast as they can. 
This frame right here is a great looking frame. We, we have all these frames to extract and that's the upcoming project. Okay, so we have everything set up, I think. I mean, this is my first time doing it. I'm a novice when it comes to beekeeping. Okay, I have my frames here that I've already shown you a close up of, fully capped off. There's a couple of ways to uncap the honey. This is an uncapping fork. It's simply insert and then go along the edge uncapping it all. Okay, pulling it off. So uh, the other way that we can um, get this prepared for the extractor is this, I'm going to call it a punch or a puncture um, wheel. <laughs> so you run it across and you puncture, just go, go across back and forth and you're going to puncture all of the cappings and it's going to get kind of messy and then once you've done that you insert it into your extractor. Let's show you that now. Okay, this is an older fashioned uh, extractor which is awesome to use. Uh, manual wheel, spinning it, will spin the mechanism down the center and it will act like a centrifuge pulling and extracting all the honey, hitting it up against the base and it will slide down in. We, we've left this in the sun for a while so it's, it's pretty warm. Can't do um, this outside because this time of year the bees are starting really hungry and within a matter of minutes of doing this we'll, we would just be completely clouded with bees. So the way we do this, not where the bar is, right here though, we stick the frame in vertically like this with the shoulder pointing down and we flop it onto this side first do the same thing on that side, it'll be over here equalize the weight, it'll spin, centrifuge, all the honey will go off to the sides and then we simply, after a while, we flip it, flop it onto the other side and the extraction will take place on the other side of the frame so let's go ahead and uh, uncap this frame right here and then put it in the extractor Okay. The first experiment I'm going to do is with the with the puncture wheel, I guess you can call it, or I don't know what it's called. Uncapping. You see how it's it's uncapping everything just by puncturing it all. That noise is pretty awesome. The sticky noise. Okay, so we're gonna make sure that everything is punctured, everything is uncapped. The great part about this is that it's leaving a, it's going to leave a ton of wax on the frame for the bees to clean up and utilize and hopefully bounce back next year faster not having to rebuild the honeycomb all over again okay so we've done that side now flip it around i'm not going to lay that flat here's oh it's a shame to to mess this up look how perfectly white that is <laughs> but here we go anchor it with my Stomach there. Okay, on this one, this little bit right here is not capped, but I've read that if at least 75% or more is capped, then we're good to go. Okay, and we're going to use the uncapping fork this time. What you do is you get underneath and then just glide it across. And while you're doing that, you want to make sure that you're just simply only taking the capping and trying not to destroy as much of all of the um, actual cells. See that? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, on this side, what I'm going to do, come over here, I'm going to actually cut it like this and see which side is better. You see how I'm actually uncapping it just by scraping instead of gliding it across like I did a second ago? So, up a daisy and down and perfect. Let's take a look. Okay. There's one, you see the shoulder is resting in that corner there, or in that corner over there, I'm sorry. And it's going to extract on the far side of that frame. And here's the other one to equalize the weight. Let's now close it and let's turn it just for a
Okay, now we flip it, which these frames are bigger than I thought, so. Okay, come over here and take a look at that. You see how the centrifuge has completely taken all of the honey out? In this particular example, we used the punch, the, the roll punch, and so all of this extra wax that we didn't destroy will be used to reshape and clean up the actual frame. And the honeybees will not have to create. But look at the difference between that and this. That is a full frame of honey. And the other side was just a frame of disrupted wax. Okay, so we put it back in on the opposite side. Okay, flip it on this side. Okay, this particular one, what we did is we used the uncapping fork to get a pick of that one. You can see how certain places we went deeper and we left a lot less wax for the honeybees to utilize later. So I like the punch. I like it a lot. Okay, this other side, the uncapping fork. There we go. Okay, let's put it in here. Get the rest of it out. Okay, so the setup we have here is a, a clean, washed out bucket. This little contraption on top is just something that rests nicely on top of the bucket. And you could, I guess, just use this without, uh, work, um, without using a pillowcase or a uh, stocking or something like that. But that would just get the larger chunks of wax out. So what we utilize is this um, old pillowcase that is clean. And we, what you do after you've done your centrifuge here and you've pulled extracted the honey, you kind of have to make sure it's there. We've only done two frames, so we're just too anxious. We've got to see. Liquid gold, that's right, love. So you see all these cappings and these wax pieces are coming out. That's why you can't just take it right out of the extractor. You've got to run one th through one more operation to get that, that, um, there we go. I'm going to tap it to focus there. So what's fun is that this is just two frames. And although our, our honey harvest this year is not that great. Um, for our little family, it's going to be a lot of fun. It just keeps coming. How awesome. Let's see if I... Go, 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 go. Keep it coming. Mm. What do you think, buddy? Pretty good. What do you think, baby? That's good. Can't get enough of it, can you? What? You can't get enough. Okay, guys. We've done all that we can. You can hear my feet sticking to the tile floor. <laughs> okay, so you see it's come down quite a ways. It's actually about halfway done, um, which is great. We're going to let this sit overnight, and I think because we chose to do use a clean old pillowcase, very high thread count, um, this is going to come out pretty clean and pure, and we won't need to do a, a second filtering. So. Now we just sit back and let it do its thing overnight. Okay, here is the final product. The kids and the family, we had a good time extracting the honey. We bought these little honey bears that uh, come fully sealed and everything. So we just manually poured them in there and put the cap on and now they go into the pantry to be used at a later date. Smile guys. <laughs>